build a profession now and then also you prepare yourself some people say I'm going to heaven going to heaven and I say what preparation are you making I don't need to prepare I just want to get to heaven everything needs preparation everything on earth everything in the great beyond will prepare you repent of your sin you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you take him as your Lord and Savior and then by the grace of God you will get there I will get there. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the friend's loyalty. On the ladder towards excellence. The key, the, the friend's loyalty. On the ladder for excellence. And you know what? If we're going to go through life and we're going to make it, we cannot be a lone ranger. We need love. We need understanding. We need help, a helping hand. And it is all that that our friends will Friends will come and those friends will help us so that we get to the place we need to get to. Look at Proverbs chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. It's a two-way traffic. You to your friend and your friend to you. That if you want a smile from him, from her, you smile. If you want a helping hand from him, from her, you give the helping hand. If you want joy and happiness and satisfaction from him, you give that too. Because it's a two, it's a two way um, traffic. It says, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Now, what kind of friend should I have? What kind of friend should you have that will help you? That will make you to go on in the journey that the Lord has given you? Now, I want to ask, the, ask it like a question. Who is your friend? How is your friend? Number one, you see, agreeable or aggressive you see somebody always arguing always wanting to beat you down aggressive in even towards you you see agreeable or aggressive b you see brotherly or brutish beast the way he talks and the way he pounces upon somebody you see brotherly and nice and friendly or Brutish. See, is he courageous or cowardly? The friends we have, the one that is cowardly, is not able to do anything. There's always difficulty there. There's always danger there. There's always saying, you know what? I cannot handle that. You see, cowardly. D, you see, disciplined or a derelict. You see, a disciplined person, he knows when to talk. He knows when not to talk. He knows how to relate. He is disciplined. And he considers how you will feel, how you will think. He considers what impact and what effect, what he says and what he does. Is he exemplary or exploitative? Exemplary. Exemplary in love. Exemplary in helping. Exemplary in being considerate. Or you see exploitative just wanted to exploit you to get something out of you you always get and you always sucks it out without you having any benefit you see focused or flirting your friend the one you choose as your friend what kind of friend would this be will this one be able to get you to where you want to go you see godly or godless you need to think about that the kind of friends you have and the people you are going on with we don't just want to have any friend it's a friend that will love us a friend that will lift us up a friend that will get us to where we're going each you see helpful or 
harmful. It's a friend. It's a friend. And when you are planning on doing something and you want to get here, get there, it's hurtful. It's harmful. And it's hindering you from getting where you ought to get. It's like it's not happy with your progress. It's not happy with the increase. It's not happy with going on. With you going on the ladder of excellence, helpful or harmful. I now is he I is he industrious or idle. Now he also always wants to talk, wants to talk, wants to talk. You want to read, you want to talk, you want to do assignment, he wants to talk, and you want to, you know, check off that internet and see how to go further. You're industrious, you are always on the move, and you are a go-getter, but it's your friend and idle one. You see, just or jealous. That French is just, he considers things in the proper way, in the proper measure. And it's just in his evaluation, it's just in the exhortation, it's just in example, it's just in everything that he shares with you. Or you see, jealous, you're moving forward, he's jealous, that's a friend. You're moving up, and he's jealous, is that a friend? And he's wanting to derail you, and he's wanting to, uh, you know, triple you over. Is that a good friend? You see, kind or kidding. Anything he says, you know, with that plastic smile, you know, he just wants to get at his kidding. You can't trust him. You can't trust that. But you see, kind, genuinely kind, these are the friends that will help us. And then we'll say, you see, loyal or lying. You see, loyal or lying. You know, whatever he tells you, when you hear from another source, you say, oh, this is my friend, but he's all telling me lies. Now, why does he tell you lies? He doesn't want you to know the truth that will make you successful. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You see, mindful or meddling. You see, mindful is mindful of your soft points. It's mindful of your delicate point. It's mindful of what can easily get you and get at you. It's mindful what he says and what he does and relates with you. It's mindful or you see meddling, he meddles in the affairs of other people, he meddles in the you know, conditions of other people, the thing that do not concern him, he is meddling. What kind of friend do you have? Is he noble or is he narrow-minded? Narrow-minded. You know, if you, um, you try to go to the library, he says, why don't you stay in the room here? You uh, say, I need a book there, I need reference friends a book there. I need to get on the computer there. But as you know, we have all the textbook in here. He's so narrow-minded. In every area of life, he is not noble. How can this be a friend? A friend that will lead you to the place you ought to get to. And then, uh, oh, you see, open uh, or oppressive. You see, open or oppressive. Once he opens his mouth, once she opens her mouth, oppression will come. You see, positive or pessimistic. You always see the dark side of life. You want to move here, be very careful. You want to go there, be very careful. You want to study that, be very careful. You want to join that course, be very careful. You want to get this done, be very careful. Always pessimistic. He, he cannot take any risk in life to move out where he ought to move. Or you see positive, you see quiet or quarrelsome. The friends we have, are they quietly just following saying, I'll watch, I'll look, I'll think before I decide, before I leave, and it's quiet. While in the process of thinking through, it doesn't jump at conclusion. A friend, the friend that will help us to be what we ought to be, they are positive in life, practical in life, not pessimistic. You see, respectable or just rotten. 
He doesn't respect anybody. Anybody that crosses his way, crosses her way, her language rotting, her reaction rotting, her life rotting, her utterance, the dirty sin that comes out of his mouth, of her mouth, rotting. Is that a friend? Or your friend is respectful and respectable. And then is selfless. He'll think about you. He'll think of your good. Not selfish. Which one is your friend? Is he selfless or is he selfish? T is he thoughtful or thoughtless? Now, why do you always say that to me? That discourages me. Oh, I didn't think about that. Why did you tell me that? That puts me down. Oh, I, I didn't think of that. I was happy and joyful and excited before you came. Now you came. This thing you have said now just deflated my balloon. I didn't think of that. They are thoughtless, such people. But your friends, the people that will help you, when you want to have a friend, a friend now, a friend that will continue, a friend that will keep on lifting you up on the ladder of excellence, they are thoughtful, not thoughtless. Are they unwavering or unsteady? The friends, you know, today is full of smiles and things that good. You are my friend, and I love you, and I appreciate you. But to, tomorrow, and nothing else has happened. You have not offended him. You have not offended her. She's moody, and then she's looking down, and she's depressed. Even her look, even her shoulders that dropped, everything can bring depression on somebody. What has happened? It's so steady. What kind of friend do you have? Are your friends unwavering or unsteady? Are your friends virtuous or vicious? Vicious. That your friends, they are virtuous. They have virtue. And they have things that will lift a person up. Things that will make a person desire to live. I want to come to class, the following class. And the following, because my friend is always an encouragement. And he's virtuous. Courage is a virtue. Courage is a virtue. And, uh, you know, vision is a virtue. And determination is a virtue. And when you have that virtue, with a virtuous friend, uh, how far you can go in life, you see, watchful or wasteful it's your friend the one you say that's my friend that's my friend and we're going together because you'll not go beyond generally the level of your friend is see watchful or is he wasteful now x is see an x sinner or x sage ex sinner he was a sinner before like everybody else but now ex is no more into the sin business anymore all he does now he loves what is bright what is good what is righteous what is encouraging what is helpful he is an ex sinner that's a good friend but now there are some ex saints ex sage he was a saint before he was saved before he was a real good person he was right just before, but now mm -mm. all that righteousness no, I don't want that again and all that good life is an ex-sage no more, a sage you see, yielding or yelling yielding you see something good, he said I bow you see something you know, helpful, he said, I yield to that. He hears something good and he says, I yield to that. I want to be that kind of man, that kind of woman, that kind of boy, that kind of girl, that kind of young adult, because he is yielding other people when they hear something you know, that demands correction. Anything that demands turning around and do something good, it begins to shout, it begins to yell. And you say, what's happening over there? Anybody hurt there? And he's yelling and yelling on top of his voice. Anytime truth wants to penetrate, anytime light wants to penetrate, he has the habit of just yelling and yelling. Now that will not help as a friend. Z, you see, zealous. Or does he have zero zeal? 
just there like a log of wood. Just there, immovable. Just there, there's no passion, there's no vision. Just there, there's no zeal, zero zeal. Now you, you can tell which one, which such a friend that you have. Are they on this side, good? Are they on that side, bad? What are you going to do now? Have the friend that will help you. Look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. In Proverbs chapter 18, reading here from verse 24, it says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The Lord help every one of us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. Point number three now. Number three, we're looking at fortified young adults leading and leading towards excellence. Fortified, strengthened, energized, empowered, and we're living uh, towards excellence. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. If I were you, I would say amen. Amen. Look at three things we're looking at here. Three things here. Number one, creating, cultivating, constructing a better future. That's what we do as we finish round up now. You say, okay, I'm going to work on this, and I'm going to create, I'm going to cultivate, and I'm going to construct a better future. Number two, confessing, correcting, countering, your beat your bitter failures the failures of the past will come to god will say god i want to start on a new stage because i confess and because i correct because i counter the bitter failures of the past number three compelling conserving contributing a bigger fruitfulness look at number one very quickly number one is creating and cultivating and constructing a better future better future in ezekiel chapter 36 i'm reading there from verse 11 ezekiel chapter 36 reading from verse 11 and it says i will multiply upon you men and bees and they shall increase and bring fruit and i will do i will settle you after your old estate and will do better unto you than at your beginnings God says, you now, you have come on the line. And he says, I'll do better things unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Better things, number one, better desires. Better desires. Now, you look at your life and you say, now, for the future, better desires. Number two, better decisions. Desires must be followed up by decision. Number three, better delays. Ah, what does that mean? You see, the people that want to have instant gratification, instant pleasure, instant gain, instant achievement, delay that. Gratification will come later. Celebration will come later. Eating this and eating that. Feasting will come later. Better delays. Number four, better discipline. If you had been on discipline before and your life just flabby because there is no discipline, but now better discipline. Number five, better discipline dutifulness. You're now dutiful. 
you are industrious and you lay your hand on something to do and you do it till you finish. Better devotion. And number seven, better destiny. The Lord will take you there. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at confessing and correcting and countering our bitter failures of the past. You see, as we come to the Lord, we must remember, if I keep on doing the same dumb things I did in the past, the same failure I experienced when I was doing those dumb things, that's the same thing I will have. But if I say, no, something bitter, I confess that to God, and then I correct that in my life, and what I do now, I counter, I counter, I go against those things that, you know, had brought me down. Look at this, number one, bitter speech of our mouth. That's what drives friends away from us. That's what drives lovers away from us. The bitter speech, bitter substance. You know the people that have that substance, they want to go on high and they want to be on top of everything and they want to silence every emotion. Therefore, they take those drugs, those are drugs. Bitter substance. You get rid of them. Bitter slavery. You bring yourself, you're being...